the husband to the widows, oh God. That is exactly who you are, oh God. And we just come to thank you, oh Lord. We just come to give you the worship, O oh King of Glory, because you deserve all our worship, O oh King of Kings. Receive the worship from us, oh God. Thank you, King of Glory, for who you are to us, oh God. Thank you, Lord of Glory, for who you are to us, oh King of Glory. Thank you, oh King of Glory. We worship you, King of Glory. We lift your name, your name on high, oh God. We lift your name on high, oh King of Glory. For you deserve it, oh God. You deserve the honor, Lord. You deserve the adoration, my Father. You deserve all the worship, oh King of Glory. We worship you, oh Jesus. We worship you, oh Jesus. We adore you, our Jesus. We adore you, our Jesus. For your love never fails us, oh God. Your love never fails us, oh Lord. Your mercies endure every morning, oh God. Your mercies endure. You are forever, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise and worship you. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this evening session and for your word that we are going to receive. We return glory. We return the honor and the worship to you. Even as we come to receive your word, we pray that you will speak to our hearts clearly. You will bless us abundantly. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Let me take the chance to welcome all of you to this online service. God bless you for logging in and for being with me this afternoon. Last week, we began to discuss why has all this happened to us? That is the question that was asked by Gideon when he was visited by an angel. He asked the angel one question. If God is really with us, why has all this happened to us? I'm sure somebody listening to me today has also gone through certain fires, certain trials, certain difficulties, and is asking this same question. If God is with me, why has all these things happened to me? I want us to see the man called Gideon who asked this question and what the answer was from God. We begin our lesson from Judges chapter 6, verse 11 and verse 12. Judges chapter 6, verse 11. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak tree in Ophrah that belonged to, the, to Joash the Abiezrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Last week, we began to look at this scripture. At this time, the children of Israel were under the oppression from the people called the Midianites. These were marauders. These were raiders. They would just come and camp in your land and eat up all your crops and eat up all your animals and carry away all your belongings and plunder you thoroughly. That was the order of the day at that time. So for seven years, children of Israel were under this caste situation, this great problem. And when they cried to God, we saw it last week, God sent an angel to talk to Gideon, son of Joash. Now, we begin from this verse 12 with what I call the heavenly greeting. The angel appears to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. A sentence definitely himself, he was a mighty warrior. Two things. The Lord is with you and you are a mighty warrior. I can put it the other way around. When the Lord is with you, you become a mighty warrior. And the angel, with a special greeting from God, wanted Gideon to begin to understand this statement. 
that when the Lord is with you, he makes you, he turns you into another man and makes you into a mighty warrior ready to fight and to defeat all your enemies. Because the problem of Gideon at that time is that the Midianites were raiders, were fighters, and they had come to plunder the land. And so it required another fighter, another warrior to fight against them. And so God was raising another warrior in the man, Gideon. And how was God doing it? He, God himself, was going to be with him and back him up and make him a great warrior. In Daniel chapter 10 verse 11, the angel of the Lord came to Daniel and greeted him and told him, man greatly beloved by God. The heavenly we look at Luke chapter 1 verse 28, the angel comes to Mary and says, woman highly favored. That is how heaven looks at us. And if we can see ourselves from the heavenly point of view, we shall discover that God is love. We shall discover that God favors us. We are favored by God. And when you're favored by God, all doors open, all blessings begin to come your way. When you're greatly beloved, God is with you and God helps you in all your battles. The second thing we saw last week is, is found in, in verse 13. In verse 13 of chapter 6 of Judges, I want to read it. Immediately the angel of the Lord told, uh, told Gideon that you are a mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. This is what, what Gideon replied. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of media. Why has all this happened to us if it is true that God is with us? Now, this is a clear misunderstanding of the principles of God. Clearly, Gideon didn't understand God. And when we compare this with ourselves today, Many times we are complaining. Many times we are saying, where is God when all this is happening to us? That is a clear misunderstanding of God because God is a principled God. While Gideon was saying that God has abandoned us, the truth of the matter from God's point of view was that it was the people of God who had abandoned God. They had turned their backs on God and they were now worshipping another God, a false God called Baal. So it was the people who abandoned God. It was not God who abandoned the people. And according to the laws of God, if people turn away from God and turn to worship other gods, there are consequences. The consequences of disobedience begin to follow them. And part of those consequences is that you begin to suffer from your enemies defeating you. And so simply put, these people were the cause of their own heart by turning away from their God. Many people today wish for the good old days, but because they don't understand the making of the good old days. As a child, I do remember how sweet home was those days when I was just a little child. And I'm tempted to think, oh, I wish for those wonderful days when my parents were there. But right now, as an adult person, I look back and I say, hey, my parents were hardworking people. That's why there was good food at home all the time. You see, they worked hard and they provided for the family and they provided good food. And you know, as a child, food was the issue. You see, when you want a child to be happy, you provide food and everything will run well. And so we wish for those days not knowing that it was the hard work of our parents. And so today, we should also learn that there is something I need to do. I need to work hard or I need to work smart, okay? So that make provision for my children and I make provision for my family. In the case of the children of Israel, their problem was not even that they were lazy, but that they had turned away from God. And God had allowed their enemies to come and ransack and de destroy their crops. Hallelujah. We are going now to point number three of this whole message about 
Why has all this happened to us? In verse 15, we read, you know, this is now, there's now a conversation between Gideon and the angel. Okay? There's a conversation between Gideon and the angel. Verse 14, the Lord turned to Gideon and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Hey, verse 15. Pardon me, my Lord. I like the language of Gideon. He keeps saying, excuse me, angel. Eh? I have a question here. Before you send me to fight the Midianites, first solve my problem. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Hey, are you seeing that? Pardon me, my Lord. How can I, Gideon, save Israel from the Midianites? When actually, I don't have a name. I don't have a position. I don't have a place. I am the least in my family. And my family is the least in the clan. And my clan is the least in the tribe. How can I save this big nation called Israel from the Midianites who have for seven years ruled over us and destroyed us? I call this the usual excuse. Gideon was giving God the excuse that many people before him and even people who are going to come after him gave as excuses when God called them. Even up to today, when God calls us, we always have a lot of excuses. But before we come to our day, let me look at two examples. One, Moses. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 11, God calls Moses through the burning bush. And in verse 11, Moses, but Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Isn't that the same excuse? It happened to Moses, the great prophet that we know about. The man who talked to God face to face. The man who brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. The man who led them through the Red Sea. And all the great, great miracles we read about Moses. At the beginning of his journey with God. When God called him and told him, I am asking, I am sending you to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. To tell him to let my people go and worship me out of Egypt. He begins with that excuse. He begins with that excuse. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israels out of Egypt? And we see there's an argument between, between a conversation, an argument between, uh, between, between, between Moses and God. Somewhere he tells God that, you see, I don't even know how to speak. I'm a stammerer. And God tells him, but am I not the one who creates the mouth? How can you tell me that you don't know how to speak and yet I'm the creator of the mouth? You see? So he, he had an argument with God because he was giving himself an excuse. In Numbers chapter 13 verse 3, we see another kind, different kind of excuse. God was, Moses sent 12 spies from the children of Israel to the promised land, to the land of the Canaanites, to find out and look at the land, how it was, in preparation for them to attack and invade and take the land. But what happens when these 12 spies came back? They brought back very good fruit from the land, but they also had another excuse. And in verse, um, in verse 33 of, of chapter 13, he says, We saw the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Are you seeing that excuse? They are being asked to go and take the land. But they say, no, 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 no. We saw the giants there. When we went to spy the land, we found there the giants. And when we looked at them, we looked like grasshoppers in our own eyes. It is this excuse that we normally give to God is actually a mentality problem. It is an attitude. It is, it is, a, it is, it is a mentality whereby you look down on yourself and you don't see yourself as capable of doing that. But also at the same time, you are ignorant of the fact that it is God sending you. And therefore, God will never send you without empowering you, without protecting you, without being with you. God cannot send you alone by yourself. 
When God sends you for any mission, he is with you in the spirit to empower you, to enable you, to provide and to strengthen you. So when you begin to give excuses, actually it is a, one, it is an ignorance. It is ignorance of that relationship with God. You are, not, you are thinking you are going to do it yourself. And you are thinking maybe I need a big name first. You are thinking maybe I need a lot of money first. You are thinking maybe I don't have this and that and the other. You are thinking maybe just a woman. You are thinking maybe I don't know English. You are thinking maybe I have a little education. You see, but if God is the one sending you, he's the creator. He's the provider. He is the almighty God. You don't need again to give him excuses that I can't do that work you're calling me. I don't know who I'm talking to you to today. Maybe you are there. God is calling you to be an evangelist and you're giving excuses. I'm just a woman. Why don't you call a man to do it? Well, let me tell you, we are living in a day when God is going to release millions of women into the mission fields to preach the gospel. It is not that you're just a woman, but the answer to all this is that God will be with you. That is it. That's the bottom line. When God calls you, when God sends you, he says, I will be with you. We see it with Gideon. God says, I'll be with you. We see it with Moses. God told him, will I, I'm going to be with you. We see it with the Israelites. God is with you. The issue is God is with you. And when God is with you, that makes you the majority. We see it with the Samson. God told him, I will be with you. God can never send you without going with you, without being present with you. We see it in the Great Commission. When God tells the disciples and says, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to do all the things I've commanded you, and says, and lo, I will be with you to the end of the age. Can I speak to somebody listening to me today? God is with you. Just like he told Gideon, I'm with you. He told Moses, I'll be with you. He told Barak, when Barak went to fight against Sisera, Sisera was a big warrior. We read that in um, the story of Deborah. God told him through the prophet Deborah, God is already going ahead of you. He will be with you in that battle. That is what makes the difference. We need to remind ourselves that it is God who is the creator, who is with us. We may be facing challenges today. Challenges which are too big for us. For sure, if you look at things like the pandemic, if you look at all the threats and all the problems, all the theories going around in the world right now, you can be so afraid. You can be so scared. But let me remind you that God is with you in the midst of these circumstances. Let me remind you that we are living in the last days and the Bible has already declared the things that are going to happen in the last days. Many things have been prophesied. Many troubles are going to come in these last days. But at the bottom line of everything, God says in the midst of all these troubles, I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Child of God, person of God, I want you to be encouraged that the most important thing in the day we are living in today is not your own strength, is not your money, is not how big a house you can build, it is not how, how educated you are, but it is that God is with you. That is what is going to make the difference. You might be uh, somebody who, who is bereaved already. Your, your loved ones have died over COVID and you're now grieving and things are so hard, nobody can comfort you. But God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am a husband to the widow and I am a, I'm a father to the fatherless. That is what God says. I will never leave you nor forsake you. The bottom line is learn to practice the presence of God. Learn to speak to yourself and to remind yourself that God is with me because he will never leave me nor forsake you. When sickness comes against you, declare to yourself, speak to your body and say, you body, remember God is with me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. When witchcraft comes against you, when the devil comes against you, when circumstances come against you, when financial problems come against you, remember one thing, God is with you. That is what makes the difference. Today I'm going to invite somebody who is listening to me today to make a very simple prayer of inviting God into your life. When you invite Jesus Christ into your life by a very simple prayer that I'm going to lead you in, you are going to discover this God who, 
who was with Gideon, who was with Moses, who was with his people, is also the same God who says, I am your God, and I'm with you, and I want to be with you. You only need to learn to welcome me, and that is it. Praise the name of the living God. Right now, I want to pray with somebody who is listening to me today. This message is going to continue next week when we shall look at the steps that how God began to lead this man, Gideon, to, to strengthen his foundations, first of all, before being able to attack and to defeat the, 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 the Midianites. We are going to be looking at that next week. Today, I want you to remember this one thing. The answer to every situation in your life is God is with you. He has promised that in these last days, through the prophet Daniel, he said in the last days, there will be troubled time. But the people who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So that is the issue. Do you know you are God? If you know you are God, you will not be worried of the many circumstances of these last days. You will just know one thing. God is with me. You will know one thing. I know that you will never leave me nor forsake me. You will just hang on one thing. God is with me in these last days, in these troubled times. I don't have to break down. I don't have to allow myself to go into mental disease, mental breakdown because of fear. Many people will be fearing and they will be perplexed. But you who knows one thing, that God is with us in these last days which are troubled days. It doesn't matter. Many people are afraid of the Antichrist. That is what the Bible says, that the Antichrist will come. It is God who is going to allow that to happen, not anybody else. And the God who is going to allow that to happen says, I'm with you. So it is none of your business. It is none of your worry. It is none of your worry. One day, one day, a friend of mine died. He died of, of, of just a simple, well, he had some tumor. He went to the hospital. He was operated. And uh, he died thereafter. And uh, I saw this friend of mine, and I went to the funeral and the burial. And after the burial, as I was going home, I felt fear come upon me, and I got so scared. And I said, if so and so can die, then maybe I'm the next person to die. I began to worry. I began to fear. I began to look around. I began to say, now, what is this thing called death? All of a sudden, God, in his mercy, reminded me that he was with me. And that, was, and that was all I needed. Actually, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart and said, it is not your time and it is none of your business. Oh, praise the Lord. These issues of death, when you're going to die or when you're not going to die, is none of your business. It is God's own business. So it is not you to begin to have a heart attack over these issues. God has your times and seasons in his book already written there. What you need is to be in presence of God, practicing and enjoying his presence. In the midst of the troubled world there is, you need to find a place where you know your God, where you read your Bible, where you go back to prayer, where you pour your heart to God, where you get strength from God. Then you'll be able to face these troubled days. I want to pray for somebody who's listening to me today. Maybe you have never welcomed, accepted Jesus Christ in your heart. You need to pray this simple prayer with me. Just bow down your head wherever you are and repeat this simple prayer. Say, oh Lord God, I have heard your word today. I need you to be with me. Today I invite you, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive all my sins. Today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that simple prayer, right now, Jesus, who is very faithful, you may not feel it, but he's already inside you. And you're going to begin to find your life begin to change every day. As you continue learning the word of God and you continue learning to practice his presence through prayer. Let me pray for everyone who is listening to me today. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, we understand that we are in the troubled times. But this is not new because in your word, the Bible, the prophets declared.
that in the last days, which are the days we are living in, we shall live in difficult times. We shall live in troubled times. The prophet Isaiah declared that darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the people. We are living at that time of darkness when the truth is upside down, when the right thing is called wrong and the wrong thing is called right. Heavenly Father, I pray for all my listeners tonight in the name of Jesus Christ that you will visit them with your presence and with your glory and you will assure them that you are the Lord, the God Almighty. They should depend on you and you alone. And when they do that, they will find the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, may you touch your people. May you heal those that are not well. May you comfort those that are bereaved. May you strengthen the hearts of your people. May you provide for all that need your provision. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you abundantly. See you next week, same time.